Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, let's let's read this mail. Um, this mail feels like it's a little bit challenging, but uh, I'll let you be the judge of that. It says, Dear Perch, I'm curious why so many incels like yourself, that may be a little bit challenging, I'm curious why so many incels like yourself demand that women in games and comics need to be, quote, hot, end quote. That doesn't reflect the world around of the, that doesn't reflect the world around us and wasn't one of the big pitches and key laws of Stan Lee that comics reflect the world outside your window. I don't know if it was, I mean, it was a marketing slogan. I don't know if that was a law. Um, and plus, it was always, as I said in other videos, that was an absurd law. I mean, the world outside your window where Galactus comes to eat your planet. Yeah, I mean, I, I get what you're saying, but let's like, let's not take that too literally. You know what I, you know what I mean? I mean, like, it's like, you know, we, we have the king in black come to the planet and cover it all in symbiote goo and, and start to turn people into zombie monsters. Let's let's not pretend like this is a world outside our window. I mean, you know, uh, maybe maybe during some of the riots, it's not like that. But but generally, no, generally, it's it's not like that. anyway, um, we'll get back. We'll get back to mail. What is this? What what is this obsession with appearance? Feels like the world would be a whole lot better off if people like you would quit talking about how everyone needs to conform to, quote, your standard, unquote. I don't expect you will read this mail on air because you were a coward, but it's okay. And then there's some offensive language that YouTube will be pissed at. Um, of course, I use it as well, so I don't know why I don't. Anyway, the person was uh, basically... Uh, implying that I might be the product of incest in a very vulgar way. So, first off, um, I, I just have to ask this question. By all means, I think what's really important in life is that you are willing to be self-reflective. Because a lot of the times, you say things, you don't really know how you're coming across, and only a fool stands there and just, you know, won't listen to feedback. And you need to be very healthy aware of your blind spot. So, in this case, there may be one for me. Um, so I'll make this statement. And you can correct me in the comments if you're, if you know, if I'm, if I'm saying something full of crap. So please call me out. I don't think I've done a lot of videos talking about beauty standards in comics. Um, yes, I reviewed Cherry, and um, you know, I've, I've had a variety. I mean, we're talking about thousands of videos, but I don't remember talking a lot about man. The thing that's screwed up with the modern comic industry is uh, the tits need to be bigger. Uh, in fact, I think my one of my more recent comments vaguely on this topic was the people were complaining about rogue's ass getting flatter in the cartoon were uh being being somewhat nuts uh because it's not that much different and you know you're taking it you're blowing it out of proportion but i don't know yes i have made the comment in the past that uh, jim lee rogue in the savage land clothes have been torn off in strategic places is one hell of a good piece of artwork and i love my me some j scott campbell i mean look the way i view it is uh the lack of organs means you're gonna have to pay less for dinner am i right uh, so, you know, lots of, lots of good stuff there. Um, no, but all joking aside, I, this isn't really what you, you may have sent the mail to the wrong channel. This really isn't one of my big, you know, talking points or, or things. I, I just don't, I, I don't know. This isn't a, this isn't a hill I die on very often, but since you brought it up, you know, let's talk a little bit about beauty standards in comics and, and, you know, what it should be or shouldn't be. And I think what's really important to recognize here for me is, um, uh, you know, Comics are a product. They're not real life. And that sounds kind of obvious, but it's true. Comics and video games are intended to be commercial, mass market consumed things. Um, in many cases, and this gets into maybe some psychology, um, things that are mass market commercial products tend to do better, are better, you know, sell better, grow better uh, when they do not reflect the world around us. Um, when they do, I think, uh, you know, problems emerge and those problems are things like, um, you know, I, I, it, it's, it's, well, people want escapism when they go to movies in most cases. Yes. I know there's movies that take a real life grounded, hard boiled look at the world and, and everything else. And that's fine. You can have a, a movie like lost in translation which shows the, uh, the, you know, isolated loneliness of being in a foreign land and being surrounded by people, but still being alone. And you have the, you know, the, that kind of stuff. People often point to Wes Anderson movies as an example of, you know, real life, except to me that that never made a lot of sense. Cause if you watched a Wes Anderson movie, it's, 
it's all color corrected and and I mean it's it's stylized. I don't know. Maybe you live in a Wes Anderson movie. I don't. I would be fascinated to see what that looks like. So if there's a hotel or restaurant that's got that gimmick going on, by all means, pass it my way. But generally speaking, um, you know, the, the movies and comics are not meant to look like real life. They're they're meant to be different, and that's okay. That that's the entire point. Now, some people every now and then argue that you know, hey, if, if the games and comics and all that stuff would be way better if we didn't worry about commercial success, and instead they just got to be honest stories and i mean sure but then who's gonna pay for this stuff like I, that all sounds it sounds delightful but who are we kidding um somebody's got to buy it you know right now target is experimenting with in their stores they've got quote unquote real life models except they've gone so far in the other direction the people you see in the store are like nobody you see out in the streets in real life so you've gone from like supermodels modeling underwear to you know, uh, in, in many cases, you know, people with deformities, other things. And again, I mean, good for you for representation, I guess. But but there's now that, you know, like if you take the collection of people you see in Target, it, it bears no resemblance to, you know, anything uh, that you see out in real life. Most people are very average looking and probably if you're in America, a little, little heavier than they should be. But, you know, I, when you're going into a, a store or when you're going into some place that's trying to sell you a commercial product, most people prefer, you know, idealized versions of people. And this is true for men and women. You know, a lot of attention gets built into like, hey, you know, women shouldn't be just these bimbo, big titted kind of models in these games. But then they'll turn around and like, but I do want all the men to be a snack. You know, I mean, how many times in comics have we seen people like fawn over, uh, Nightwing's ass, or you know, it's like, oh, look at those abs, and 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 people have no problem with women being severely thirsty in comics over all this stuff. But then you turn around, it's like, you know, what the biggest problem plaguing comics is today? It's Power Girls boob window. That's just uh, that's that's a sign of a sexist, uh, horrible time where people looked at uh, physical appearance and didn't care about the person inside. It's like. Yeah, except there is no person inside because this is a comic book character. You know, it's like J. Scott Campbell's art. There are no organs in there because it's art. I, I'm joking, by the way. I've, I've never pushed the... I mean, people sometimes do not get the joke. I understand I have a dry sense of humor, but I don't think it's that dry. I had somebody write me the nastiest mail. I mean, some joke about, yeah, but where are organs? It's like, yeah, it's people like you who are a dick. I was like, Jesus. You know, why, why are you people so dumb? Anyway, um... Look, it, it just is what it is. So if you if you want your product to be commercially successful, then you're probably going to have an idealized human being. And where women are concerned, that tends to be taller, thinner, larger breasts. Um, and that's just, that's how it is. You know, flowing hair, all the rest. Now, every now and then you get, you know, subculture type stuff. Uh, what was it, back in the 90s or maybe it was 2000s? You had that uh, Suicide Girls site that spun up. And it's like, these girls are all heavily pierced and tatted. And there are people who are into that too. But still, if you're talking about worldwide kind of commercial product, you know, fairly, you know, traditional type things are attractive. Every now and then somebody brings up like, yeah, but in 1700s, you know, heavier women were more in vogue. I, sure, I, I guess. I mean, we don't live in the 1700s. So I don't know what the point is as the taste of the, you know, of the population change, then so then they will change. I mean, I, I don't, you know, newsflash at 11, you know, things are different as they go on. There's a period where, you know, there, you know, some little bit of hair was good, then shaped is good, then like a little runway strip was good. Like it, it varies from time to time. That, that is life. So, you know, I, I mean, just, you know, what are you going to do? That, that's, you can fight against that, but if you do it, you're taking a risk with your product. So right now, you know, there's a lot of dialogue going around around gaming and comics. It's like, we need to make it more realistic. No, what you need to do is lean into the fact you're selling a commercial product. That's what you need to do. It is a commercial product. And because it's a commercial product, um, you know, it, it, needs to, it, it, it needs to sell. If you don't care around sales, you can do whatever you want. If you have a very unique hook, you know, the creators of Faith... The comic believed that a heavier superhero was unique enough that that would bring out some sales. That that may that was almost true, but you know it it faith didn't 
but it didn't crack 50,000 copies a month. I'm, I'm using that number arbitrarily, but anyway, that's just, it's your, it's your product. It's your choice, but railing against it, you know, is stupid. And by the way, railing against it while simultaneously talking about Nightwing's ass is, uh, is, is both stupid and hypocritical. So you gotta, you gotta pick a lane at some point. Um, you know, it's comic books. It's superhero escapist fantasy. Therefore, you know, the if you if you want to have a mass market, highly selling thing, probably you need to put, you know, idealized men and women into it. That's what's gonna help you. I, it's not that complicated. Um, and by the way, I'll throw this one philosophical point out to you. Um, because people often bring up like, well, don't you think people should be able to see themselves in comics? And my answer is no. I, I don't think I I don't know that that matters. Quite frankly, I don't think it does matter. It's a different question if you're going to say, well, don't you think that somebody who's overweight or, or you know, a, a different skin color or has a disability or or any of those things, don't you think they should be able to go out in public and you know not be mocked and laughed at and be able to feel comfortable? Yes, yes, I absolutely believe that. Absolutely. I, 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 you know, I, but I think we're, those are very different things. If you're talking about somebody with disabilities feeling comfortable to be able to go into a shopping mall and shop and have a good time and, you know, leave without having, you know, like people throwing tomatoes at them, that doesn't happen anymore. But I mean, just like people like making cruel jokes behind their back or any that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's bullying. That's bad. It should be punished. Uh, you know, I, that's, that's, that's not cool. Um, representing people with disabilities in comics. I, I mean, you, you can do that, but the purpose of the comic is to sell copies and be commercially successful. The purpose of, uh, in real life, people feeling comfortable, you know, where they are is somewhat of a human need and a human right. You know, nobody deserves to just get shit on because of the color of their skin or their gender or any of that kind of stuff in real life. You know, if you go into a restaurant and somebody's like, sorry, man, you're too fat to eat here. You know, that's a bunch of bullshit. That, and again, it comes back to commercial success. That restaurant is, you know, is is basically, you know, missing out on a paycheck. Here's where I want to make a joke. But, you know, it, it, it might be a big paycheck. I, I, fuck, I did it. I did it. Anyway, my point is, um, I, that, that's, that, see, I'm doing, I'm, I'm a hypocrite. I, at least I admit it. But my point is, people should be able to go out in the world and they should be able to, to feel comfortable with where they are. Easy enough. In comics, you know, you, you don't need to feel comfortable in the real world because somebody has drawn a person who looks vaguely like you into a comic book. If you need that kind of validation, you have bigger problems on your hands. Uh, that is not a healthy, that's a codependency to a fictionalized world where the fictionalized world is ultimately going to lose money and, and not be able to stay in business, and then you'll have nothing. And also, you should, you know, the, the world and you should be building up your own confidence and success in who you are, not requiring that you go and pay money to a Marvel comic book to help you feel that way. And let's, let's also call it, call it out as bullshit anyway, because people don't, that, that's not how it works. You know, people don't go to a comic book and that is going to be how they are confident as people. Uh, that, that's more sad than confidence. And so, you know, it's all, that, that's my opinion anyway. But, uh, but please do tell me in the comments. I've done a lot of videos talking about, man, we need some giant tits in comics and all the small titted girls need to go away. Like, I, I don't know. I, when I was growing up, um, you know, Rain in New Mutants, the one who would turn into a wolf. Like, I, she was hot. I, I was, I was like, fuck, especially when Brett Blevins drew her. Jesus. I was like, uh, I don't know. I was like, I was cute. You know, and keep in mind, by the way, at my age, you know, that'd be kind of creepy to be thirsting on on rain. But, you know, back in high school, different story. You know, she was my age. Not creepy. Uh, but anyway, but that that was, you know, and she did not have giant tits and a short haircut and turned into a wolf, which is a different problem. So, ah, uh, Texas. Gotta love it. Anyway, uh, thanks for listening.